You got that silver one? Yep. We just installed the wall thimble, which separates the pipe from the combustibles inside. There's an actual secondary ring around this that keeps the heat from this pipe from penetrating the wood. Now we're installing another T with an extra clean out for the outside so that you can clean it out out here also as well as behind the stove. There it is. Okay. I got it Tommy, go ahead and turn that band around. Well, that does look like part of the cap, I gotta just tell you. <laughs> just like say, up town. Yeah. Slide it up where your fingers on. That one time you slide it under the drip edge if you can. Nah. Yep. I'll just go down with it a little bit. And... Oh, he, oh, we're gonna have. Yep, I see you. There we go. You're gonna save a ton of money. Mm -hmm. Well, it'll it'll go down. Yeah. Okay. Yep. It'll actually expand and, and stretch to the whatever size we yep. need. I got you. Okay, that right up. Yeah. What happens with that is, uh, you know, you get something like this, and it's pulling air into here and then exhausting it out. And you take a room this size, it'll probably use take up all the, the air yep. in this room within an hour, two hours. Really? Yeah, it's interesting. They did some figures on that. And uh, this will pull that in, and then it will exhaust it out. And then the other thing is, uh, as this is blowing, this, you know, you get back here, if it's not hooked up, this is pulling, and this is blowing. So you've kind of got a conflict of interest there, too. So now it can just blow and expand, and especially with your heating that okay. top room like that, you know, that'll... Well, if you put this in a sealed room, you could actually burn all the oxygen you could. in that room. Is up. that right? Absolutely. Yep. No kid. Yep. So that's it, the potential. That's why they make you bring in the, the fresh air from outside. Okay, ready to go. I'll hold it up here and you take it down there. This stuff is beautiful. Like this stuff. Yeah, I like it too. It was time to get some corn from our gravity wagon and see how the stove would perform. I had a minute to chat with Wes about the potential there savings we could expect. Wes, well, very important is to keep the corn dry, is that correct? Yes, it is. To start out with a good dry corn, clean corn. The cleaner, the drier it is, the better off you are. So. Is there a certain percentage on the dryness? Or? We recommend 14 or below. Um, if you get over 14, you're going to notice a difference. Um, they say 10 to 12 is optimum, but few people get down mm -hmm. to actual 10% corn. Mm -hmm. If you can find 12%, you, you will gain efficiency. I think they said that's what this was, right in that range. I remember uh -huh. that now. We just bought this uh, gravity wagon, though, and we put a little job on it. We've you know, got wood and tin, and it's definitely watertight. Yeah, it may not look way. that great, but, you know, it's going to work. Well, and if it works, that's the big thing. Of course, Sue is going to camouflage this thing, if you can imagine. <laughs> oh, yeah, that sounds good. Just, uh, yeah, hopefully nothing runs into it, doesn't know it's there. You know, we were talking, too, um, about how much money that can possibly save on corn as opposed to the propane. What was the deal you told me? It's a, a the rule of thumb is five gallons of propane is equivalent to approximately one bushel of corn in the BTU value. Okay. And of course that varies somewhat with your moisture, your corn, all that sort of thing. But that is that's a general rule of thumb. Mm -hmm. So you know if you take a bushel of corn, which is 56 pounds, 35 bushels to a ton. Um, you paid $150 a ton, is mm -hmm. that right? Correct. And then you take five gallons of propane, and what was your cost for propane? It was 209 the 209. other day. 209 So, you know, you're looking at conservatively figuring, I would expect to see you probably cut your heating bill in half, or there's potential to do more. I think so. I think we had it figured out that pretty much it'd be more than that, but 50% yep. is tremendous. I mean, my gosh. You know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And another thing that is available this year, some people know and some people don't, there is if you buy one of these stoves, this company will give you a certificate that states that this qualifies for a 30% tax credit. Mm -hmm. This is a credit right off the top. And of course, mm -hmm. you have to talk to your tax man right. and say, you know, how do I qualify? What do I need to do? And all this. But that unit qualifies. Mm -hmm. So you take a unit, and, and I'm just going to throw out a price. Let's say that it sells for $1,800. And, and then everything, including the installation, the it's all venting, it's all part of that package. So you know, suggest that we we end up with a, a cost of twenty five hundred dollars. That customer can turn that 
in for a $750 tax credit off the top of that. Yeah. Now there's a month's propane for you that you just saved right there. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> You know we've been uh, working on getting this all set up to go. It's ready to go. Let's go take this corn and start it up. I'm anxious yeah. to see what it's going to do. <laughs> yeah, I think it'll do well. Well, they already took one of them, I guess. I only see one bucket, but... Wes, now how much will this hold? Around 50 pounds that hopper will hold. Okay, so. let's put it in. Yeah, let's let's uh, see if we got enough here. I'd say we're we pretty have. close. Yeah, it'll be real close. Yeah, let's see if we can dump it in there. Yeah, it's going to be close. One bucket down. Now, do you fill it right to the top? Or? It depends. It's up to you. I, I, I a lot of times do, just because I'm lazy enough that I don't like to come back and fill it again. There's 50 pounds. Yeah, that's really close. Put a little more in it yet, You eh? could put more in, yeah. Okay. But if you keep it at that, you know, that's, that's not a big issue either. Just the more trips you might want to make back and forth, it's up to you. <laughs> well, you said... You know, approximately, if it's not yeah. freezing out, if you took one of those big pails a day and just kept five, putting it in every day, that that's probably all you're going to need. It, it very well could be. Yep. You know, of course, everything depends on how high of a setting you're running on. The higher setting you run on, obviously, the more corn you're going to use. But. Now, if we just have it on low, though, or medium, what does it take to burn that 50 pounds? A couple of days or one day or on the well, average? Well, we can kind of do... Um, I, you know, we can do some figures to get that out. I would say on the average, um, if you're burning on the lower settings on here, it'll last you all day long. Sometimes it'll last longer than that. Mm -hmm. You know, okay. Okay. Uh, you've got your settings one through five on the control panel. What you're yeah. going to show me, I don't know anything about that sure. yet. So <laughs> <laughs> I know how to pour the corn in at this yeah. point. Well, that's, hey, that's, that's, that's you know. pretty important. Okay. Okay, here's the control panel right here. And basically you have about, there are five buttons on here. Um, this is the on off button and I'm just pushing it now. You can hear the motor start up. The draft fan is what you hear running right now. Um, what's interesting, when you push that button, it starts a 15 minute countdown in this panel. It's programmed for 15 minutes. And uh, in 15 minutes, it's supposed to get up to a certain temperature, there's a, a, a sensor in there. It's a safety feature. And when, when that sensor closes, it allows current to flow back to the board. After 15 minutes, this board is going to look for that and it's going to say, is the fire still burning is what it's really asking. Um, if that fire has gone out, it'll shut it down. It'll say, hold on, we don't have a fire here. We're going to shut down. So that's what happens when you start this. Up here at the top, we have three settings manual, thermostat and automatic. Basically, in this case, we're leaving it on manual because this is all going to be, you're going to change the heat as you need it. Um, if you were going to install a thermostat on here, you would move it to the thermostat mode and that thermostat would kick down when it didn't call for heat. You say you set it on setting three, it would kick down to setting one when it was satisfied. The automatic is used only with with uh, igniter, basically it's a pellet application. It'll shut it on and off. Personally, I've found that it's better to leave it at a constant setting, and if you need to change it, just punch the button. So we're leaving it at manual. Now, here is the auger button. This auger is used to prime, and I don't know if you can hear this, but that motor is running. That's, that will prime the auger if we need it. The fan button is for use only on setting one. And if you push that, now we're still in the startup mode, so you won't hear anything, but it gives you two fan speeds on setting one, high and low. Um, heat level, oh, I'm sorry, I missed one. Auger trim is, I don't know if you can see this, but there is a...